Praise the Lord for him. Today, the message will be called the promises of God, even though I touch here and there and everywhere on it. The promises that God has given to us. We have been told to accept. And you know what? Listen, today I don't want it to make it too long. And that's quite hard for me. But try to really grasp on to everything that I'm going to tell you. We have been told in the past to accept Jesus into our heart. That's fine to accept Jesus into our heart. But if you're going to accept Jesus into your heart, accept what he says. People think that accepting Jesus into their heart, the one-time thing, is the end of the world. And they think that this is it. They don't need to go anywhere else. But if you accept Jesus, you want to accept what he tells us. You want to accept what he has written for us. You want to accept his word. His word must become the Logos. Praise the Lord forevermore. So we're, we are told to accept Jesus, but uh, accept his word. Many people accept Jesus, but don't accept his word. We all have our religions, our what we think, the heck with what we think and let's go with what it's written. It is written. That's what's important. What is written. Now, you know, the promises of God, what God says that he will do, he will do it. We talk on one side of our mouth, what we believe and if we really believe when we get in trouble we need to go back to the promises of God <clears throat> praise the Lord forevermore first Peter chapter 3 verse 12 for the eyes for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous if you are a righteous person, and you know, I was thinking about something that was said here, about, uh, I think it was Ed that was saying that uh, people say, who is that guy? And people don't want to admit, and they don't want to see what God has done for you. And some of you, when you became born again, people did not want to accept what Christ had done for you. But the, the, the eyes of the Lord, are over. Now this is a promise for you. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And his ears are open unto their prayers. Now, do we really believe that or we don't believe that? Last week I said, if we ask God and we come to God and ask him for something, but we really, really don't believe that's the enemy of unbelief. God tells us in his word that if our heart, this is people, the people that are, are their heart are leaning towards God. If there's a lot of people that are praying today, but they're going nowhere. But if your heart is leaning towards God, God promises that his ears are open to what you are talking to him about. It is open. Because, because your heart goes after God, he is calling you a righteous person. And his ears are open to your cry, your need, what you want. It is open to it. And if you don't believe it, what good is that? But, 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 but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Now, the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. What's evil? If I smoke, if I drink. Me, I'm going to break down. If you commit adultery, if you do this, that, and the other. Me, I'm going to break down for you evil in one word. The face of the Lord is against them that don't believe. Because if you believe, there's no evil. 
all you what you have done wrong in the message of grace it's painful can you imagine evil is in one word unbelief a person you know people that are in the flesh look at people and oh they're committing adultery they are lying they are stealing they are gossiping they are whatever and you have some people that crank themselves with stuff into their arms, drugs, pill poppers. Are they evil? Yeah. But if he put the word belief there, if belief was in force in their life, if belief was a reality for them, the rest of them they wouldn't have. That's a fact. Because if you believe, you know that you serve a God that is a healer, he's a deliverer, he will set you free. He is your king of kings and your Lord of lords. He is the one that is going to come riding on white horses and the saints with him. The one that you are supposed to be calling on. The one that you know that he will be there in the secret chamber when you pray. And that's a person that has faith. Is that person perfect? No. But evil is unbelief. Show me a person that is evil and I'll show you a person that is an unbeliever. And something I don't want you to miss here. You could do none of the things that I'm talking about and still be evil as evil can be because you don't believe. If you are, if you do not believe the gospel, the Bible calls you a murderer, a liar, a thief. You take parts of the ones that would be cast into the lake of fire and some of them were called unbelievers. Praise. Do, do I hear, I'll say like this, God. Do I hear a praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Hey, whoa. <clears throat> you know, I feel that when I preach, I preach too fast. For you to grasp on, I'm not saying you're dumb or anything like that, but for you to grasp on to what? To what I'm trying to say. And yet we have people behind the pulpit. Let the same mind of us in Christ Jesus be also in you. And I mean, and they're going 100 miles an hour. When people leave the church, they got nothing out of it. You see, I wish I could chew on the same verse. But then the service would be finished at 8.30 tonight. Okay, you know. So that's why you need to listen to the message over and over again. Oh, praise the Lord. <clears throat> praise the Lord forevermore. <clears throat> For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against them that don't believe. Put it that way instead. That don't believe. <clears throat> and woe is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good. What the heck are you scared about? Why do sometimes fear comes upon you and you're so scared about? It? He just finished telling you it will not happen to you. If this will not happen to you, I'll take care of you. You know something? We need to believe a little louder and harder than we do. And this only happens by God and you not. And again, witnessing. You want God to lead you by His Spirit? You want to learn to move by the Spirit of God? When you start and you move into the area of doing God's will and God's work, you don't know what to do, you don't know what to say, but the Spirit of God in you guides you and teaches you and guides you into all truth and tells you what to speak because it's not you that is speaking, it is the Holy Spirit through you that speaks. And that's how you'll get to learn to move by the Spirit of God. You hear, you start doing His work, and then all of a sudden you're starting to get used to the, the Word of God speaking to the inner man. And that's what makes you speak. It's the God speaking to the inner man, which the Holy Spirit is in, and brings it, to, brings it from the inner man to your mind, and your mouth will speak those words out. 
That is the way that happens. It will not happen no different way. Somebody said to me not lately, but how do you know when God is speaking? I heard him. He spoke to the inner man. The Holy Spirit inside of you. His promises. He says, the Holy, I listen now. The Holy Spirit inside of you says to the Father. Because he says, I'm with you now in the flesh. But I'm going and I'm going to come back. Not another God, the same God. And I'm going to be in you. I'm with you, I'm going, but I am coming back. Not something else is coming back. And I'm going to be in you. And that same spirit says to the Father, what do you have for Anito? What do you have for Melissa? What do you have for Glenda? What do you have for Edith? What do you have, Father, for them? He's the mediator. And when he hears from the Father, he'll tell you. That's the way it works. Praise the Lord. Oh, somebody is cheating. <laughs> Praise the Lord for <clears throat> And who is he that will arm you? Who is he? Let somebody badmouth you. Who is he? That person does not know how much in trouble they're in. I mean, if any one of you that have little, have, will have a little kid or had a little kid, you're protecting that child with your life. And God's not going to do the same for you? I think he is. And woe to the person that tries to arm you. That's the promises of God for you. See where you stand at. See where you are. Who you are in Christ. Hallelujah for the more. <clears throat> if ye be follower, this is only, listen. God's going to be with you. He's going to make his abode with you. He's going to manifest himself through you. He will guide you. He will lead you. Only. The, the middle of that same verse, 13. If. There's a qualification here. If. You are a follower of him. If. Not if you're perfect. He didn't say that. Not if you've never done anything wrong. If you follow him. If you follow him, you're a person that believes. And the rest of it, he will clean. The evil that's in you, he will wash you by the washing of the water by the word. Praise the Lord. We need to believe the promise of God. <clears throat> Listen, before I talk a little bit about the promise today, I want to tell you that the churches today, and I, that is, I call them the world, okay? They make promise that it's not true. They make promise that it's not true. They make promise that will not happen to you. It will just not happen. But they make you promise. My dad used to do that. Make, you pro make me promise. Every day I'd ask him, well, Dad, can I go to the do a hay with you today? See tomorrow. Dad, next day, Dad, can I, take you, can I go tomorrow today? Um, no, no, you come tomorrow. And this went on for a month. Can I go with you, Dad, today, tomorrow? One day I said, Dad, it's today, tomorrow. I said that. I remember saying that. I said, Dad, it's today, tomorrow. He said, yeah. Well, I said, you said that you're going to take me. He started to laugh. Okay, go. But God is not like that. Man makes promise like that. But God is not like that. Praise the Lord forever. Lift up your hand, you that, that were told that you're going to be raptured away one day he said. Well, they're promising you something that is not going to happen. And I can't explain the whole thing today, but I'll give you some idea. And let him that has a ear to hear now, let him hear. Him hear. Are you going to be at the place that you're not going to get nothing on what I'm saying? Or are you going to be ready to receive what I'm telling you? So, that's up to you. Okay? 
But <clears throat> Matthew 24. Verse 40. <clears throat> this is the verse that they give you and you children of mine. I ever catch you doing a thing like this. Huh. I'll do like uh, Kenny does with the chicken. <laughs> Did you see Kenny's job? I'll do the same with you, I think. I think. Don't take a verse. Now, I'll show you how they take a verse out of context. Watch. I'll read this verse. And I don't want you to ever take a verse out of context. Read the whole thing. Excuse me. Okay. Verse 40. Then shall two be in the field. One shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. Okay, stop there now. Don't read no more. This is the verse they use that you're going to be taken away into a rapture. You're going to be taken away to be with God. And we're not going to go there. But just write it down. The other verse they go to. It's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 13 to 18. That's the other verse. And both of those verse has nothing to do with a rapture. Absolute. The word rapture is not even in the Bible to begin with. Now, so they say, see, you're going to be taken. Okay, the one that has heard about a rapture, know that this verse they use to show you you're going to be raptured to be with God. You're going to be taken away to be with God. Yes or no? Yeah, okay. Oh, praise the Lord. You're with me. Me, I'm going to show you the one that is taken away is going to be destroyed. I wish I did already show you that. Some of you anyway. All totally opposite than what we hear. Okay? Okay. So, listen. I need to say this. So this is one verse that they show a rapture. The second verse is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from 13 to 18. But what I won't want you to do, never to do, is take a verse out of context. Read what it's talking about. Or else I will do what I said I was going to do with you. I'll take you to where Ken is working and I'll take you away. Okay. And 1 Thessalonians it's, it, they use that. But if you start at verse 13 of that verse, uh, uh, instead of starting at the verse 15, start at the verse 13. And the subject and the object there is about where is the dead? What will happen to the dead? We will be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Okay. Now, are you still in Matthew 24? Now, Follow careful with me, and I'm going to show you the ones that are taken are going to be destroyed. He says it right there, if they could only, but this is what darkness does. They read the Bible, and they're in darkness, they have no light, and that's what they heard from in the Bible school, and they don't know any better. But here it is. Start at verse 37 and follow exactly with me. Of Matthew 24. But as the days of no more work, stop there. You're going to see the ones that are taken are destroyed. No one was not taken. No one was left. Okay? I mean, I know some of you have heard me say that before, but are you growing up enough in the Lord to be able to explain that to people? That's what we need to do is to explain people what they've been taught is not right. Okay, now, 37. He's giving an example. As the days of no more work, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. He says, well, the way it happened in the days of no more, it will be the same way it will happen when Christ comes back. Well, was, was, was no more taken into heaven? No! The ones that were taken were all killed. Watch. The Bible says that. I didn't say that. For as in the days that were before the flood, 
They were eating and drinking. Stop there. I want to tell you something that's going to happen before Christ comes back. It will be a time of prosperity. That part we that never said before. It will be a time of people are going to be quite comfortable. It will be a time of prosperity. They will be eating and drinking. They can afford to eat and to drink. It's quite, things are going pretty good. For as the days that were before the flood, they were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. Okay. Watch now. Watch now who is taken away in the next verse. And knew not who did know. Come on now. Who did not know that the flood was going to be here? The unbeliever. No one knew he built an ark. Watch now. Watch now who didn't know and who's taken away. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Now, look at the word took them all away. One will be taken, the other left. And took them all away. When Christ comes back, besides the bride of Christ, all of them will be taken away. Not in a rapture. To be destroyed. And if you're here and you don't understand that, ask God to reveal it to you. Look. Okay, he's giving an example. So did Noah. So if the church is taken away, then Noah was taken away. Noah was not taken away anywhere. He was in the boat. He was under the protection. And when Christ comes back, the one that will be taken away is the one that are going to be lost because the one that are going to be left are going to rule and reign with Christ on earth for 1,000 years. They're not going nowhere. And verse, a thousand verse I can show you on that. I don't have time today though. You have any problem about the one that is taken away? Spend some time with me when I have time. I want to help you. You're not stupid. Some of you have... It's better to take a person that's never, that doesn't know nothing, has not been indoctrinated, and teach them. They're easier than a person that is older. Somehow, something has got a hold of our, we cannot change our way of thinking. <clears throat> so it's always better to talk to people that just come to the Lord. They believe. So many people have come to the Lord and, and were taught false. That's not good. So now, in verse 37, he tells us who is taken away here. And then we're going to read, one will be taken away. Well, he just finished telling you who was taken away. And in verse 39 again, he tells you who's taken away. And you not, okay, he's saying it's going to be the same way. Then, and you not until the flood came and took them, took them all away. They were all taken away. Everyone that did not believe God, did not believe the, mood, the, the message of, of um, and they were not taken away in a rapture. They were taken away to be killed. In the book of Revelation, it talks about it. Come to the supper of the great God, the marriage supper of the Lamb. The supper of the great God is for the birds. I've said that before. And the marriage supper of the Lamb is for the Christian here on earth. I mean, my goodness, I can't explain any better than that. Okay. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So the ones that are taken away, he right here is telling you the ones that were taken away are the ones that are not saved, the ones that don't have it. So then, the next verse, how can it be the ones that are taken away are gone to heaven? You see, it doesn't make sense. <clears throat> and you not until the flood came and took them away, them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. When the Son of Man is, it will happen the same way as in the day of Noah. Two will be in the field. The one that's in the field is the one that is worth. The field is the world. The Bible says in the parable of the sower, the field is the world. So two would be in the field. What does children of God do in the field? They work. They win people to Christ. They talk to people about the Lord. Two will be in the field. One will be taken. 
And the other one left. I told pastors in the past, I'm going to be left. I'm not going to be taken. You're not going to be taken? No, I'm not going nowhere. I'm sitting right here. Really? I said, yeah, really. Two will be in the field. The field, the Bible says what the field is. The field is the world. The world is what he left you in for you to go and tell people about the Lord. And the one that will be taken, they're taken by the end of Christ. And they will all perish. They will all be destroyed. It's not, it's not, I'm not preaching something I've never preached before. You're looking at me like with a Jim Baker look. Some people say, what's a Jim Baker look? Say, find him on TV, you'll find out. Okay. <clears throat> Praise the Lord forevermore. Okay. Okay. Two shall be in the field. One shall be taken and the other left. He just finished telling us in the verse before the one that's taken was destroyed. He just, do you see that? How about you guys? Don't say yes and why because you're going to hell for that. Some of you are not so sure. Just come and show me that the ones that are taken that are not destroyed and then I'll go along with you. Okay. <clears throat> then two shall be taken and two shall be in the field. One will be taken in the other land. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, like two persons. One will be taken in the other land. Watch therefore, for you know not the hour that your Lord comes. Mm -hmm. You know something? Watch because you don't know the day. Never mind the way it's going to happen and be able to believe rapture. Be ready. Never mind what you don't understand. Get ready. And ready, Satan has lied to people by saying, at the last minute, if you get into trouble, ask God to forgive you. God says, prepare to meet thy God. It's not a last moment thing. The virgins in the Bible, they waited to the last moment and they were all lost. The people at the flood waited till the last moment and they were lost. The, in the time of, of, of Sodom and Gomorrah, where Lot was speaking to them, they waited till it was too late. And is it possible that there are some people here that you're going to wait until it's too late? God is not going to hold you responsible for what you don't understand. But what you do understand, walk in it. Walk in the light that he has put before you. Put the things that are behind. Get the rocks out of your pocket and press forward towards the mark of the price of the high calling in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> but this, uh, 43, but know this, that if the good man of the house would have known, so he's telling you that you will not know. You'll know the season, but you will not know the, the, the time. You would have watched. So start watching now. Don't, you don't have time for foolishness anymore. Come on. You would have watched and would have not have let your house be broken in. <clears throat> broken into. Listen. I don't know what word to tell you. But if you are hungry for God, if you still want God, if you want to keep pressing on, God's promise is He will be there for you. The only one is if you put belief on the side. Belief will cause you to have nothing to do with your brethren, cause division until you leave. That's what unbelief is. That's what unbelief will do for you. Unbelief is terrible. All the sin come after unbelief. The Bible says, and uh, this is not part of the message, but in First, uh, in First Timothy, I believe, chapter 4, verse 1, some shall depart from the faith. Some shall depart from the, from the faith. When you depart from the faith, you got no other thing than becoming evil. You don't have to commit adultery and all those sins. You depart from the faith, you will take part in the lake of fire with the unbelievers. It's that simple. Some shall depart from the faith. Watch what happens when you. So some say, one save always save. God says, once you depart from the faith, 
departing from the faith is leaving him. When the, where do they read that stuff? Did they get a, their Bible in the popcorn box? A comic book? Some shall depart from the faith. And look what happens when you depart from the faith. The first thing that happens, you start, you start to listen to seducing spirit. There are spirits out there all around you that are trying to suck you in. And when you depart from the faith, you will start listening to seducing spirits and you will start listening to doctrines of devil. You're going to speak lies in hypocrisy. they are going to smile up to here. Oh brother, I love you. But don't turn your back, I'll steal your wallet. Somebody yesterday says, what happened to you? Your continent has changed. That's what you're talking about. Well, look at your face. He says, did you lose your wallet when you were on holiday? I thought that was funny. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Oh, I love Jesus. Oh, we they don't think of him. And when you meet them, they're not interested to talk about the Lord. Not interested. They're not excited about anything. Oh, but I go to church and I love Jesus. Hey, boy. I'm not going to say what I thought. <clears throat> now, Philippians chapter 1. Listen uh, to the position that you're at right now, if you're there. Philippians 1 verse 6. Be confident. Are you confident in God? Are you confident in what you have? Me, I don't know a person after the flesh. Some people say, well, how, how do you know things? And my daughter Pam, she's in China and I'm telling her things and I'm not even there. First of all, I am not judging her after the flesh. And I don't judge none of you after the flesh. Uh, Paul says, I judge no man after the flesh. Well, what did he mean by that? I judge no man. I don't go by what you look like, the way you dress, but I go by the fruit in your life. I judge no man after the flesh. If a person has no fruit, he's dead. Period. That doesn't change. If you still have a suit on, a nice dress on, you're dead. And he says, I judge no man after the flesh. Now, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until he comes back. Rebecca's been sad lately. Rebecca goes through a hard time sometimes, like some of you are going through a hard time. But God is saying, Rebecca, the work that I have done in you, when you were tormented, you didn't know where to turn. You didn't know where to go. And the last place was to, to, for you to come was my place. That's the last place you wanted to be. You didn't know God. You needed to be set free from demon powers. What happened? Did he not do a good work in you? A work that Philip could never do? And all of you that I've mentioned, God started a good work in you. Do you think he's not going to finish it? If you don't think. If there's only one thing he's asking of us is don't become evil. Believe. I mean, that's a pretty good deal. We're rotten to the core. Good for nothing. And he says, the only thing I'm asking of you is you believe what I've done for you. Believe that I've died for you. Believe that I shed in my blood for you. Believe that I stood between heaven and earth and said, Father, he lied, he lied. Lama Sabbath tonight. My God, why have you even forsaken me? He stood alone. And when you go through a hard time, he stands alone. But be confident that what he started, he will finish. He will finish it. He does not have any drunk yard. Some of you are disgusted with 
hurt yourself. Some of you are weeping here and you have the right to. But I'm, I want to let you know the promises of God today that He will set you free. Because one of these days, He will call you an overcomer. How can He call you an overcomer if you have never overcome anything? Hallelujah. Oh, I thank the God of heaven that is able to reveal His secret to His saints. You don't know about something. You don't know what to preach about. You don't know what to say. He says, get in your closet and I'll go there and talk to you. I got three messages yesterday. None of them were any good. At the last minute, I got it. What the people need here today. God will not give you what you don't, you can't handle. God's going to give you what you need. I can't talk to you about the beast of revelation and the seven heads and the ten horns and the mountains. You're not there yet. Or about Daniel, the prophecies of Daniel, which are in the book of Revelation. You're not there yet. I can't finish talking to you about the grace of God. You have not chewed the beginning yet. That's why if there's a message you keep listening to is the grace of God. What God provides for you. His promises. Hallelujah. Edith. Edith. That's my wife, by the way. I know what God done for that woman. I was there. I'm an eyewitness to those things. Is he going to dump her and forget about it? Or some of you that you still have, you're struggling with things that I, I sometimes think that you should have gotten rid of him, but it's God that works in your life, not you. My job is to preach to you. My job is to tell you. My job is to serve you, not to grab from you. I have never grabbed anything from you. None of you. Money or nothing. I have given to you what God gave me. I have delivered everything to you. I have held nothing back. <clears throat> Be confident of this very thing. That he which has begun a good work. The work that's in you that he started is called a good work. Something wonderful. That's why you have a work to do. And your work, the work, is a full time job to believe. That's what he called you. Hold on and believe. What? They came asking him. They came to ask Jesus. What do you want me to do? What is the work that you want me to do? And he answers that. And today everybody tries to get a job in the church, cleaning the church, doing this, that, and the other. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to go cut some wood? A trilo? Do you want, what do you want me to do? Go pack some tracks and when you're not, I'm not led of God? Go talk to people? What do you want me to do? What is the word? What can I do that I may work? That's the question. What can I do that I may work the work of God? You have a year to you? He says, this is the work of God that you believe. What I see, I back it up. <clears throat> so, become, be, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Christ. And listen, I want you people to keep him in prayer. I talked to her this weekend, and you know, she's a baby, like some of you, she's just starting to, not long ago, but I see a glow in her. And I told her, sometimes you don't like what I'm telling you because I'm telling you the truth, and sometimes you're not interested because you're not there. But I see a growth in her. She's growing. So she's part of the body of Christ. If you grow, it's because God is working in you. And let's keep her in prayer. You know, the people of God will recognize one another when they meet one another, when they talk. Okay? And let's not put anybody else, anybody down that is our brother. When Jesus called the Pharisees a Pharisee, they were not his brother, they were Pharisees. They were the enemies of the cross. I'm not talking about that. But let's, if a person is a child of God, let's, let's stand by them. Let's help them. Now, 
uh, Psalms chapter 25, 14. Here's the answer for you. Here's the promise. Here's the answer for you. The secret of the Lord is with them that reverence. The word fear there, not like I was scared of my dad. Reverence him and he will show you the is covenant if you reverence god he promises you he will show you his plan that when you have trouble it'll go back in your head to his plan and you'll fear no more i'll say that again in case you didn't listen and that's very possible <clears throat> okay what verse was that again 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that reverence him. Okay? If you reverence him, this is the word of God is not written for the world and the church world that are not interested. They are for the people that are hungry for God. Not perfect people, but people that want to keep growing. That's what this word is for. It's not written for the rest of them. They don't understand. They have eyes, they can see. They can't, they can't, they, got, they can see, but they cannot see the word. They cannot, they hear when you talk, but they cannot hear anything enough. They cannot understand anything enough. Hearing is understanding. Unless they become converted. The secret of the Lord, the secret in having God's favor in your heart. The, the thing, the secret in having God to do things for you. Is with them. That reverence God. You all want God to work in your life. You all want God to do things for you. You want to pray for people. And you want things to happen. The secret in it is them that love God. That's what he says it in a different way that I said it. The secret of the Lord is with them that reverence him. Give you an example of reverence. I was at Shiloh this week. At night, I was alone outside, and the cloud, there was not a cloud in the sky, and I could see the carpet of, of stars. And I'm thinking, I'm looking at the star, and I'm thinking, am I upside down right now on earth, and I'm not falling, the gravity is holding me, I'm part, I'm just floating, oh God's God, and I become so small. I become so small in the sight of God. Like, my goodness. The reverence that I have for God, how big. Our mind cannot comprehend how big God is. And he loves man, he's chosen a bride for himself. That's what, that's what his plan was before the foundation of the world, that he would have a bride for himself because he never had a bride. And his bride is going to be people that love him. When you call yourself a Christian, you're saying, I'm getting married to Christ. But does he know about it? Does he want to marry you? If many are called, but a few are chosen. Only the ones that are chosen that are faithful. And the ones that will make it have three names. They have to be called. Some have been called and they never went anywhere else. The ones that will make it, the Bible says, in the book of Revelation, and I've given it to you before. They have three names. One of them is called they have to be called. The second, they have to be chosen. Once they were called, the reason they were chosen, because they obeyed God. God, I call a lot of people for, for me. I could call a hundred, and out of a hundred, maybe three are really good. So all of them, they all been called, but I chose only three. So the ones that will make it are called called, chosen, and faithful. Those are the ones that are going to make it. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his plan. When you really believe God and you really believe in his plan and Satan attacks you, automatically, automatically you'll go into the computer that's in your head. And those verses will come to your remembrance. The heck with you, Satan. Get lost, you monkey. Because you believe the word. You need to believe like that if you don't. Amos chapter 3. God is 
is using an example here. If I give you the verse, you'll be reading it. God is using an example about war. You know, in the Middle East, in Israel, when they're going to receive an attack, a bell rings. A bell will ring. An announcement will come over the radios everywhere. We're in danger. Something is happening. God says, when this happens, that you hear a sound, aren't you scared? Aren't you scared of that sound? Well, of course. If you have any brains in your head, you'll be scared. Because danger is here. Well, he says, is there any evil? Listen, guys. Is there any evil that comes to you that I don't know anything about? Do you see how God works? Is there any evil, Melva, when you were sick and you were confessing it? Or some of you are still? God says, when you started getting sick, I saw the end of it. I, I see it. And when a, a, a bell rings in, in the city, and a, a, doesn't everybody run and they're scared in hiding? And he's giving this one example. Verse 6. Shall a trumpet blow in a city? Amos 3 verse 6. Shall a trumpet blow in, in the city and the people not be afraid? Question mark. Shall there be any evil in the city and the Lord has not done it? People say, oh, the Lord doesn't do nothing. The Lord will not do that. Oh, no, the Lord doesn't do that. Who sent the flood of Noah? Many Christian be Christian, you ask them that question, they say, it's the devil. The Bible said God sent the flood and killed them all. God, the Bible says that God sent a volcano, fire from heaven on Sodom and Gomorrah. Was the tsunami of God or was it of the devil? The Bible, are we going to believe the world or are we going to believe God? He said, can a trumpet sound and people not be afraid? Well, of course not. All, well, is there not any evil that will happen in the city that I don't know nothing about it? I'm not aware of it. I've not allowed it. I've not done it. God will send things in your life to straighten you out. I keep saying that and saying that again. Jeremiah 33. God is saying, you know what I want you guys to do? You think you know everything. He says, I want you to call on me. That's another promise. The promises of God. He says, I want you to call me on me. And when you call on me, I will tell you things that you don't have a clue about. The secrets are with them that fear God, that reverence God. Oh, man. I, you know what? I can never have enough of the Lord. I cannot have enough of the Lord. The first verse that I started with today. I thank the God of heaven that reveals those secrets. I thank the God of heaven. Now, Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Call on me, and I will answer you. Not needy. You know something? When real hard time is going to come, how will you stand? How will you stand? Some don't know that they don't know that they need the old armor of God around them. They think, they, you know, how, when, the best way to find out where you stand is when you go through trials and you can't make it, you can barely make it, and they're nothing. They're nothing. That's a sign that when hard times are going to come, you're going to run like a rabbit. I hope it doesn't happen that way. But that's why you put the helmet the protection in Ephesians chapter 6, the, the helmet of salvation is protect your head from Satan and from bad thoughts. People come and talk to you and unload their garbage in your head. And then you say, okay, you go. I'm going to keep it all. And you're at work and it's just bombarding your head. 
You, you're you're going to continue what the devil came and did to you. <clears throat> and you know that this is true. I will not say it enough. Get rid of those things. I was going to help you. Call on me and I will answer you and show you great things. Not little things. Great things. Look what the things that God has shown you people. When you go out there and speak to people, do you know what they are? Look what, how merciful and how great God is. Why? You, because your heart is after God. But don't faint. Don't stop. Him that will endure until the end, that same shall be saved. <clears throat> Come unto me, and I will, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. I'm going to tell you things that you could never have figured it out on your own. I'm, my life is in the word of God that has happened to me. I'll show you mighty things. I'll show, mighty things are things that you know that people don't know about. And when you talk, you'll be able to back it up. Back it up. And then people will say, like they did in the early church, where about Jesus? Where did this man get this wisdom? Guess where it came from? From above. He's just really saying it. How come he speaks with great authority? A person that speaks with great authority is a person that knows his stuff. He knows what he's talking about. And if you question him, he'll back it up. He speaks as a man having authority, not like a Pharisee. A Pharisee talk, 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 but back up nothing. That's a Pharisee. Oh, Jesus loves you. Get lost. That's an old story I heard when I first came, came to the Lord. I know Jesus loves me. He's not wrong in what he's saying, but hey, is there more to, there's more to it. If he loves you, and he loves you, are you keeping his commandments? I accept the word, accept what he's done for you. I accept Jesus. Well, accept what he says. Praise the Lord forevermore. <clears throat> Call on me and I will answer you. And I'll show you great and mighty things that you don't know nothing about. In closing, just this last one here. I want to talk a little bit about, I want to show you something. If you didn't get nothing out of today, get this one here. Because I said the church was preaching my message this morning. So glad you guys got off the pulpit. Okay, let you then. Talk, I want to show you something about the dead. So we're on the right track here, uh, my friend. Matthew chapter 10. Now, put your ears on again. And it's not. For you that know me for a long time, it's not something new. It's not something that you've never heard. But this is for everybody here and people that don't know me for long. When God says to go and raise the dead, what the heck is he talking about? Go to the cemetery and get them out of there? No. No. Can Jesus heal a few dead people? Not many, by the way. Not to he healed many people, but raised a few from the dead. Physically, raised a few from the dead. Peter did the same amount, if not one more. And I know a man physically that has raised some from the dead also. But when he said that, he did not mean go and raise people physically from the dead. Okay? I didn't give you the verse yet. Matthew 10, verse 8. Okay? Start at verse 8 and follow with me. He's telling the disciples this here. Go and heal the sick. Ask that question to yourself. God told you the same thing. Go heal the sick. As for me, does this happen? Yes. Many times. Okay? Raise the dead. He told me to go raise.
preach the death. Have I done it? Many, many, many times. Many times I've risen the dead. Stop there for a moment. Turn to Matthew 21. Okay? He says, Jesus said, he said, he says, come and follow me. He says, well, let me go bury my father. He says, listen, let the dead bury their dead. So he's saying, the dead that's in the grave, that's in the casket, let the dead person that is carrying the casket bury the dead that is dead. So God calls people that are nowhere dead. Okay? Now, so now he's saying, go, and Isaiah 16 verse 1, arise and shine for the light has come. Arise and shine, you, you're dead. Before you become born again, you're dead. Go, he says, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, there was leper in those days, raise the dead, dead spiritually, cast out devils, Freely, he didn't say charge. He didn't say make them pay money for it, like the, the, the people make you do today. Freely, you got it for free. That power is on, on you, I'm working through you, it's free. And you give it free, don't charge for it. What do they do? Bigger the miracle, bigger the offering, hey. Come on now. Big offering, big miracles. How oh, phony. People are in such darkness. Um, they're dead. People that obey that, they're dead, period. Watch. Cast out devil. Now listen. I want you to learn here. I can't help but going on a little bit here. Provide neither gold or silver. He says, when you're going to go and preach, don't provide Don't provide. He said, I, okay. He said, freely you have received, freely give. He's talking about people that are going to do the will of God. Here. Let's see if he wants you to get paid for it. Provide neither gold, nor silver, nor brass, nor, nor brass, nor purse. He, well, the end of the story is, I want you, and then he'll say, don't carry two coats, but carry one. Don't bring a, a stick with you. You know what he's saying? I want you to travel light. And then I'm going to tell you your money that you're supposed to receive. Okay? I'm going to tell you exactly what you should expect. I don't want you carrying gold. Gold is heavy. Don't carry two coats. That's heavy. Don't carry a bunch of stuff. Don't carry uh, food with you. Travel light when you're going. They were on foot. Okay? So I'm going to get you in the right uh, place here. Provide neither gold, nor silver, nor brass in your purse, nor strip. The word strip here. He says, don't take the word strip in a strong concordance is wallet. One of the words is wallet. Don't bring a wallet with you. Watch. For your journey, neither two coats in the same verse, nor Chris script, script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, don't bring a bunch of travel light, man, nor yet stay straight, that's a rod, I checked the word, for the workman is worthy of his meal. Your job is to give me a cheeseburger when I come to your place. Make me, you should make me something to eat. And if you don't, the heck with you. Keep it. How's that? That's what I'm, so that's all for the, hey, he's selling you how to travel. Don't bring a wallet. Don't bring a staff, don't bring two coats, don't bring a, a pile of shoes with you, travel light, don't bring a wallet, don't bring a bag of food. And he says, where you go, you are worthy of your meat. They should, you are worthy if you, they give you if, if, okay, if, if they give you something to eat, you're worthy of it. He didn't say empty 
see everybody's wallet. The Lord is showing me that there's 20 people in here and you all have a hundred dollars and God will bless you. Hallelujah! That kind of junk, get it out of your mind. You don't even have to give me nothing. But if you do, I'm worthy. That's exactly what he's saying. Come and sing a song because I'll go on forever. <laughs> <laughs>